Hi. So since most people seem to start these things with who they are and why they're qualified to do a TED Talk, I'll go ahead and start by saying I'm a student and for the most part I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm a student at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and in the public health department. And two of the most important things I've learned since being here is outside of how much I hate group work are the importance of prevention and intervention. Prevention is kind of like telling your little brother not to climb that big tree. And intervention is like putting a mattress under the tree for when he does it anyway. So, of course, this is an extreme simplification of what these two are. But I'm not here to talk to you about what knowledge you can get with $20,000. I'm here to talk to you about homelessness. And if you aren't also paying $20,000 with me, you might be wondering, what does public health have to do with homelessness? Well, I'll get there. So the Department of Housing and Urban Development defines homelessness as a person sleeping in a place that isn't meant for human habitation. This includes sidewalks, um, abandoned buildings, cars, and many other places. So like many programs, this is an intervention. If you're on the verge of homelessness, or you're already on the street, then they'll provide you with transitional housing. But if you're on, already on the verge of eviction, then you're already up the tree. So what are we doing to prevent homelessness? So sure, there are better preventions than telling your brother not to climb up the little tree. You can install anti-climbing mechanisms or for a more realistic version, put a tire swing on the tree so he'll want to do that anyway. So let's take a look at what the U.S. does to prevent homelessness. So um, one reason a person might be on the verge of homelessness is inability to pay extremely high utility bills. So I went to the, um, Housing and Urban Development's website and found this magical page. Okay, so my first thought was, cool, HUD's already doing this. I'm going to have to find a different TED Talk. So I click on the link that says, help with your utility bills, and found this. Oh, so of course I click the home page and search for a frequently asked questions page. So this is the website for the Public Staff Utilities Commission's office and they help North Carolina consumers fight against the utility companies for like problems with their utility bills. So the first question that I looked at was, does the public staff provide financial assistance? No, they don't. I'm not super surprised, but the next question gave me hope. My service is about to be disconnected for non-payment. What are my options? And so, cool, they say they can um, put you in connection with local agencies who help you pay. That's what we want, right? So, of course, I click the link and it takes me here. Right, back where I started. So this all takes me back to my question of what are we doing to prevent homelessness? If I'm on the verge of homelessness in this scenario, I look to HUD for answers and got nothing. And this is just one of many scenarios. So before we move on to the next one, I would like to say I did this research a few weeks ago and HUD realized their error and updated it and the link now sends you here. So HUD also defines homelessness as people who are at imminent risk of losing their home or losing their primary nighttime residence. And they define imminent risk as within the next 14 days. So I'm like, great, this is the prevention we're looking for. We're getting our little brother not to climb the tree. Sure, he's running full speed towards the tree, just like this guy. But hey, he's not quite up the tree yet. So let's focus on these 14 days and um, compare that with a few eviction laws for some different states. So for a legal eviction, a landlord, that's the person who owns the residence, has to file a claim with the court and both parties should go. Different states have different policies on how the tenant, the person living in the apartment, receives the notice. So in New York, they're very strict, and um, they formally serve you and make sure the person gets the notification that they should appear in court. In many other states, it's more so the sheriff issues the summons to court, and that can be about wedging a piece of paper in a the door. There's no guarantee the person will get it. So in New York... Um, New York, if you aren't, if you haven't left the premises five days after the judge's ruling, you'll get 72 hours to vacate the premises. In North Carolina, you get 10 days. In Delaware, they give you 24 hours. And in Maryland, you get zero. In Maryland, there is no requirement to inform the family when they are to be evicted. 
So how do you prepare for being at imminent risk of homelessness when you have no idea that you're going to be homeless or you only have 24 hours? You can't prepare for that. So back to the question I posed at the beginning. What does public health have to do with homelessness? Well, we're pretty good at prevention. There are resources to help families pay their utility bills before they are disconnected, but people need to know where to find them. There are fact sheets on eviction laws and tenants' rights, but some people need to be reminded that they do have a voice. Everyone can play a part in not just helping people who are already homeless, but fight for those people who fight for those people who haven't quite gotten there. I'm still trying to learn about the different ways that I can help, and I hope you'll do the same. Thank you.